Sailors on the Starless Sea is a zero-level funnel adventure for Dungeon Crawl Classics, written by Harley Stroh. For those not familiar, Dungeon Crawl Classics is a hybrid of 3rd edition D&D and games of the 70s and 80s. One of the most notable characteristics of DCC is the zero-level funnel, in which players control multiple peasants who traverse a deadly meat grinder to separate the wheat from the chaff, or the lucky from the unlucky. And this is one of the most renowned funnels. A group of peasants are fed up with the spate of recent disappearances from their village. They suspect evil at the old ruined keep and with pitchforks and torches in hand, seek to challenge whatever denizens lurk there. The backstory and hook for the adventure are fairly generic, but can be easily modified to suit your chosen setting. It is an introductory adventure, which is fairly simple to run, but can be challenging for players, and avoids the mundanity that is sometimes seen in low-level adventures. No rats or generic goblins to be seen here. Instead, the adventure showcases the weirdness common to the DCC game, clearly taking some inspiration from the chaos of 1980s Warhammer. The encounters are interesting. Beastmen, vine horrors and an undersea tentacled beast are all scary and interesting for the players to encounter, especially at zero level. The fact that these monsters are beatable is not obvious. The players should not feel like they are playing on easy mode here. Most of the monsters are able to instantly kill level zero characters with a single hit. The adventure has an epic feel to it, despite the fact that it is low level. Tension builds as the characters delve deeper and the scale of the adventure increases. It is a linear adventure in an enclosed area, allowing the players to stay on track whilst not burdening the referee with many different paths. Remember, this is designed to be a short, brutal adventure with a clear resolution, so I don't think linearity can be held against it. There are, however, some hidden areas which yield extra treasures, rewarding exploration. While these areas are interesting, they can be skipped to maintain momentum, which is what I did when I ran the module. There is a good mix of combat, exploration and puzzles, each one unexpected and avoids common tropes. The module requires the players to interface with the environment and use their brain to solve some of the puzzles rather than relying on their character sheets. One complaint I would have is that I feel a zero level funnel should be completed in a single session of about four hours. I've run the adventure twice recently and the first time we blitzed through it in a single session, missing some parts which were not integral to the adventure but still the whole thing was somewhat rushed. This is partially due to the time spent on combat, which is not particularly swift in DCC, but that's unavoidable. The second time I ran the adventure was over the course of two sessions, which was a much more comfortable pace, though I did still skip some parts. The set piece at the end of the dungeon has the potential to be quite challenging. The first time I ran the adventure, my players didn't really know how to deal with it, which is perhaps due to the cautiousness bred from our many sessions of OSE, where recklessness is punished. The second time I ran the adventure, the party dealt with the final enemy very well, donning disguises to reach the ziggurat and scoring a series of critical hits to dispatch the shaman and acolytes. When running this adventure, you should make it clear to the players that they will need to utilise their full complement of peasants and to be fearless in facing threats. One of my groups engaged the final enemy with only four characters, and as a result they were quite swiftly eradicated. There are some real highlights to the adventure, such as the vine horrors, the glowing-eyed skulls, and the manier at the edge of the starless sea. Even if you don't run this adventure, these are great things to place in your own campaign. The purpose of items such as the sensor and the skulls are not immediately obvious for the players and very little information is given that might reveal their purpose. In addition, the skulls in particular are sinister enough that the players may not be willing to use them. While the players in both my groups picked up at least one skull, they didn't work out what to do with them before it was too late. The art is generally very good and evocative. The artwork that merges with the map is very characterful though the map is not well suited for players or for VTT. In this system, a precise map is not necessarily required, but if you do wish to use a map, it will be more difficult. The module is very usable, with clear descriptions and not many sections which will cause confusion. 
Players should be aware of the deadliness of the funnel before they play and reminded that while caution is recommended, they should not be too reticent. I highly recommend this adventure and it is a great introduction not only to DCC and its funnel system, but also the weird and creepy tone often associated with DCC. You should pick up this module if you're just starting out with Dungeon Crawl Classics. It can also be quite simply adapted to other OSR systems as well. Have you ever played this module? Let me know in the comments how you enjoyed it. And if you would like to support my channel, you can subscribe or even pick up one of my books. And as always, thanks for watching.